Here we go again. Steve the Amateur Historia! Oh, I appreciate all the precautions. Do not bend, fragile. Fragile, do not bend. Ah! Oh. Oh my goodness. You wretched... Ah. Ooh, well padded in the back. Much appreciated. Well, hello everybody. Steve, amateur story, and back at you because I got some more obscure vinyl in the mail. And honestly, obscure enough, I don't even know if this band has a Wikipedia page. Which, that's how you know they're obscure, is when they don't even have a Wikipedia page for their name. Uh, oh! Yeah, they do. Discography. Yeah, not a lot of information, but... Uh, discography. Alright, so this was... This that I purchased in the mail... Again, original because you know they're not making copies of albums this obscure now or at least they're nowhere to be found so this is an original 1986 album by a band called Virginia Wolf another obscure band that I randomly discovered you know searching for new obscure 80s music and uh, nicely delicately wrapped and uh, I'm assuming the name is a play on the, you know the character of Virginia Wolf even though she had two F's Maybe they did this to avoid a copyright issue, or maybe they just did it to be like, we're referencing that, but it's also our own thing. I don't really know. Maybe it'll say on their Wikipedia. So, uh, it's, they're described as a British rock band, which, if they're British, then that's accurate, because, yeah, they're a British band that did rock music. They, there's periodic elements, I would say, of New Wave, but they're definitely not a New Wave band. There's just some songs that have, you can almost hear a song and think like, is this a new wave band maybe that's doing a little bit of a rock? I don't know. So uh, according to this thing, the band was around from 1977 until 1988. So they were established in 1987, or 19, 1977, but their first album, this one didn't come out until 1986. So it was almost a decade of existence before they got their first album. And... It says Jason Bonham was their drummer. And I saw that name, and I'm like, Bonham, I know that name, but I could never remember. And of course, he's the son of John Bonham, who was the drummer for Led Zeppelin. So the drummer for this band is the son of the drummer for Led Zeppelin. So I noticed on the um, their second album, I don't think it really advertises it on this one, but on their second album it says, like, with Jason Bonham. And I'm like, oh, well, that must be an important name. And they were trying to obviously, you know, get a little get a little attention by say by you know the Bonham name so yeah he was the drummer for this band now I kinda wanna list, pay more attention to the percussion in their songs knowing that information but yeah so this is this is an, I mean, oh, you can, oh man look at I me mean, look at that this is even yellowed a little bit but yeah you can just tell that that's old this old Atlantic is this Atlantic Records I mean it says Atlantic I'm wondering yeah, it's Atlantic right It says Atlantic right there. Before we get to the LP itself, yeah, I, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see there's even a stain here. That was probably where there was like a price sticker at one time. Because it's that kind of like little little box shape thing. But yeah, you know, it's a simple album cover. You know, it's like a, uh, I don't know, a radar detector type look to it. Um, with the, with the, uh... V and the W um, for Virginia Wolf, and uh, yeah, there's a little picture of the of the fellows in the band. You know, got a little bit of a hair band thing going. Not that much. They almost all kind of look like they're related. But it's uh, these are these are different. So um, so yeah, five tracks on this album, and I I definitely like this album a lot more than their second outing. Their second outing had a few songs that I liked, but. There's like, yeah, like I know like five of the ten songs on this album I know somewhat well from having heard them multiple times and I really like. Um, 
yeah, so there's a couple of these songs that, again, you know, like like a lot of albums, you need to give another listen to, but knowing that I already really liked half the album, um, you know, I'm not going to buy an album if there's only, like, two or three songs I like, but if there's, like, five songs, five or six songs I like, and the other ones I still need to give another chance, then I'll definitely give it a shot. I found this for pretty cheap. Um, you know, there's not, not, not a whole lot of copies of this stuff out there because, you know, this band wasn't uber successful. Like, you know, that's the purpose of this series. Um... So yeah, it looks like they broke up in 88. I don't know what, I mean, maybe they just weren't making it. Um, Cause I don't, I don't think either of their two albums. This is their first album, which is the eponymous album, just Virginia Woolf. And then they did a second one called Push in 87. So this is 86 and that one was 87. And they um, broke up in 88, it appears. And so they have the, People that were in the band, the discography, but there's not even pages for the discography, and there's not even listings of any singles they may have released. So I'm, I'm wondering, I want to go to like, um, I want to actually look up specifically this band's discography, because I want to see like, I mean, I'm assuming they had to have at least released a few sing singles, and if they didn't, well, that probably explains one of the reasons why they didn't make it. Like, you know, singles are everything in music now, but they've always been important to a band's success, because they would always get, or not always, but often be released before an album came out, so it got attention towards the album by coming out early so that people would hear this song, you know? I really like this song. They released another single. These two singles from this band, I really like it. Well, now I'm going to go buy the album. I mean, that's not really how people think nowadays. Now it's just about buying individual songs online or whatever, and a lot of performers don't even really do albums anymore because, you know, well, a lot of musicians are lazy, but it's almost kind of extra work for a lot of songs that people aren't probably going to listen to. That's one of the things I hate about music is, you know, most of the time, the only songs that ever get successful are songs that are released as singles. And it allows songs that just happen to not be released as singles to be just completely forgotten. And there's so many good songs that I've heard through the sands of time that were really great, but nobody's ever heard of and they don't get any listens because they weren't released as a, as a, as a single at the time that they were, it was being released on some album. Um, so... You know, that that's why I don't I don't do the whole like just assuming a song is good or assuming that the only good songs are the ones that are getting attention because that's you know, that's a lot of studio stuff. They say we want you to release this, this and this as singles, but it doesn't mean it's the best songs they did, obviously. Singles and EPs. Okay. So yeah, it looks like According to Discogs.com, they only had, like, four or five singles. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, so they had, like, four singles from this album, but I feel like only one of the songs is one of the songs I really like, so I feel like there was a lot of missed opportunities here. Not to say if they would have picked songs I like that suddenly the album would have been a major success, but I, I feel like based on what there's only one of these songs is one of the songs I really like that was released as a single off this album so and then push I'm wondering well I actually I think that's like all the singles they had so I don't even know if they had a single off of the their push album they maybe had like one so yeah it's kinda like well no wonder you didn't go anywhere if that's like all that happened, yeah. So yeah, it shows, um, yeah, so three of their, or I guess, yeah, four of their five singles were off of this first album, and most of them were songs that aren't my favorite. And now, is this One Night song from Push? Yeah, so they had one song from their 87 album as a single. No wonder you didn't go anywhere. You gotta have your singles, man. Anyway, yeah, so my five favorite songs on here are uh, the opening track I really like, Are We Playing With Fire? Uh, Make It Tonight is probably my favorite song on the album. Um, Waiting For Your Love I really like. That's like the only song that was released as a single. That's one of the songs I really like off of here. Uh, Living On A Knife's Edge, I like. I feel like it gets a little lost. 
it starts out really good and then I feel like it kind of gets lost in itself. And then Goodbye Don't Mean Forever is another song that I really like. And again, you know, mid, mid 80s, mid to kind of later 80s band, they, you know, they just did some, you know, good solid 80s rock music is my opinion. Now we get to see the actual vinyl. This this is very slick still. I mean, this is a 33-year-old LP. Um, you know, it's like a little a little fold here, but I mean, otherwise, you know, a little bit of weathering, you know, kind of on the edge and kind of, you know, near the top here. But otherwise, not in bad condition. And this has obviously made the round somewhere. But this is in very good shape. It's not bent or folded or da even damaged on the corners, which usually is the case. Um... So I have I have high hopes that this is going to be a pretty decent, uh, this LP is going to be in pretty decent shape. Mm, let me see here. Oh man, yeah, no, this, the, like, I, the, um, Worlds Away LP I got that I said was in flawless condition, this is even in better condition. There is not a mark of any kind. Look at this sheen on this. This has probably never been played before. This has probably never been touched before. I almost feel disgusting putting my filthy fingers, well not filthy, I took a shower like a half hour ago. Yeah, 1986, you got the Atlantic Records logo, all that good stuff. Same thing, obviously, on the other side. And yeah, you've got the little like, again, I don't know if it's like a serial number, but you can kind of see right there. It says ST-A-855900-D. And then there's a something, and then like a 1-3. I don't know what that all means, but yeah, no, this is in, this is in flawless. I mean, look at that reflection. That is, I was not expecting this to be in that good a shape. So yeah, I'm definitely going to give this a listen at some point today, take it on its maiden voyage. Um, but as I said in, I think my last one, I'm not going to actually play um, a song or portions of songs from from the albums I get because I keep getting copyright claims on them and you never know before one of those copyright claims is, you know, you're going to piss off the wrong person. And they're going to decide to make it a copyright strike instead of a copyright claim. You never know. So, again, um, I think both of these albums are on, both of Virginia Woolf's albums are on, they might be on Spotify. Now I'm kind of second guessing that. Or at least I think one of them is, but I think most of their songs are on YouTube as well. You can find them um, somewhere. So, you know, if you want to, you know, go and give this a listen, if you like yourself some good 80s, you know, rock music. With, with a slight, a slight essence of new wave at times, um, you know, here's, here's one, here's one possibility for you. So, um, thank you. Um, as always, I've just been, you know, churning a couple of these episodes out because I bought, like, six LPs at once, and so they've been slowly showing up, like, day by day. And, um, as always... Thank you for watching. Remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, hit up my Patreon if you want to, and uh, till next time, this has been Steve the Amateur Historian.